In this video, I'm going to show you how I made my new light air sail. In the plans, the Pahi 31 is cutter rigged with a Genoa stay sail and mainsail, but also a drift, a very large drifter that comes all the way back to the third crossbeam. My boat didn't come with a drifter, but it did come with a spinnaker. This has been very useful in light airs, but only downwind to a beam reach. I really needed a larger upwind sail. The options were to find a suitable second hand sail or cut down a larger sail to make a new sail from scratch as inexpensively as possible. Of course you know which one I would pick. Moving some furniture at Hackland, I had just enough room to mark out the sail. I marked the outline using taut line. I definitely didn't hammer any nails into the floor, no way. I laid out a large tapo one, with the fibres along the leech and the foot. I was first thinking to use a mitre cut. Mitre cut sails were popular back when only more stretchy sail material was available. However, the angle of the clue is very close to square so I figured it would be okay without that. I cut off the excess and sewed it on the top to make the full sail, using every part of the animal. I removed the metal eyelets. One way to remove the eyelets is to tie a rope on and string it up in the wind, but a much better way is to just tear them out by hand. To make a good sail shape I knew I needed to sew straight, but that's quite difficult on this slippery poly tarp material. So I used the taut line for guides. Here I am sewing the leech. The sail wraps around the leech line marked with yellow. The sewing machine foot rides along the, the bump of the line. I just need to make sure that the line is under the yellow mark. I put a slight outward curve on the luff, about 50 mils, so that the sail would have some belly. I added reinforcement patches to the corners. I'm going to make um, <clears throat> tie points with these straps. I have two of them, one's going to go like that and then double up. Cut off the corner of the sail so that the strap can lie in there and put tension straight along the ends rather than be off at an angle. Second layer about there, the underside going around the other side obviously. Very not worried that this is going to be strong enough. And this rope, I'm going to try this method for tensioning the line. That's just a bit of rope being left over for a tension hitch so you can pull that in. A bit difficult when you're holding the camera, but uh, that's the idea. For the hanks, I'm just gonna mount a hole through here and use soft shackles. The hanks aren't really about um, strength. This is gonna be plenty strong, I believe. Um, the hanks are really so when you drop the sail, it all goes into a neat bundle. My new sail. It looks like I cut it a little bit longer or it's stretched. It's not hanked on yet. Because um, I just needed to move the boat back to the mooring. But I still really wanted to test the sail. So I might cut it down a bit. Um, it does go to windward a lot better than the spinnaker does. So that is a success. I'm pointing fairly high. Not as high as the little sails. I just can't turn up more um, because the leech starts to curl back. So I currently feel like this is a moderately good first attempt at sail making. This is my way to make soft shackles. Lightweight soft shackles from Dyneema have recently become trendy on racing yachts, but I have a much simpler way to make them with just a stopper knot and a lark's foot. It's a good way to attach something that is also easy to remove and will be the same next time. I use these quite often on my boats and have not had any problems with them coming undone or chafing through. I 
I melted holes in the webbing with my soldering iron because it doesn't cut through the fibres. Also melting creates a hard circular hole just like an eyelet. I used a bit of wire to pull the soft shackles through. They are held in by friction. It's not as fast as brass hanks, but much cheaper. And it means the entire sail is made from widely available materials. I realised that my mast was too vertical. I adjusted the rigging to rake the mast back a bit, as per the plans, and then the forestay became the correct length. One of my pet peeves on YouTube sailing is seeing insufficient halyard tension. Those wrinkles reading out from the hanks are weak points in the sail and also interfere with the airflow. This sail is already at full hoist so it needs a slightly longer forestay. But despite that I could point much higher than before. I was pleasantly surprised just how well it worked. It even tacked quite well because now I had more speed, making the steering more responsive. When I tack this sail, I have to carry the sail past the inner stay, but that isn't a problem because I use it when it's light wind and that means it's also calm. The big question is how long will this sail last? This sail would wear out from UV quite quickly, so I make sure to always put it away when I stop sailing, as I do with my other sails and I can see a few places where it touches the rigging and will need some chafe protection. But overall, I think having this sail significantly improves the boat. It's now much easier to cover a good distance in light conditions when sailing is most comfortable and enjoyable. Total cost was under $100. About $50 for the tarp, $20 for heavy duty sewing thread, and another $20ish for the edge lines. I had the webbing already on hand. Also, I think it looks great. I just love that cheap blue colour.